my name is Catherine and welcome to episode 2 of Talk Blockchain to Me. If you missed it, my previous video went into um, the basics of a blockchain structure, why it's called a blockchain and why individual transactions on it are so hard to modify. And today I'm going to go into the remaining two other characteristics of a blockchain structure, namely the consensus mechanism as well as the distributed ledger. So blockchain technology is actually one form of distributed ledger technology and I know that's a mouthful so let's just break this down. So in accounting, a general ledger is essentially somewhere that a company will record all of its financial transactions on and it'll also record stuff like you know, uh, credit and debit, asset and liability and this is all just a really fancy way of saying uh, what, a co what a company owes and what a company owns. So if we apply this ledger concept to a blockchain, the ledger contains every single transaction that was done on the blockchain structure. So it literally is just a copy of all the transactions that are done on this blockchain structure. So let's consider the following scenario. Let's say I'm working on a group project with my teammates Charles and Maggie and we're working on it on a Google Doc, right? So on a Google Doc, you can see uh, the changes that are being made, and I can see you know, what Charles does, I can see what Maggie does, and I can also download an offline copy if I wanted to. So let's say my teammate Charles looks at the data that's in our report, and he's thinking to himself, you know what, this report would be so much better if we got the result B instead of A. So, so he's like, okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change the data from A to B and I'm not gonna tell Catherine and Maggie because, you know, they won't notice it. However, Maggie and I both have a copy of the original report. So when we're double checking our report to hand in to our professors, let's say, Maggie and I notice, why is this B instead of A, right? And so we're like, let's go back to the copy that we have and see what it says. So I pull out my copy and it says A, Maggie, pulls out her copy that says A, then obviously somewhere along the line, someone changed the data from A to B. So if we apply this ledger concept onto a blockchain, it means that it's really hard for anyone to go back and change a transaction because everyone has this master copy of the transactions. So it's actually really easy to pick up of any changes that were made on a blockchain. Now, blockchain actually takes this even one step further with what's known as the consensus mechanism. So consensus by definition means an agreement and the agreement is among everyone who is on the network. So if we're going back to this Google Doc example, right, and it's me, Charles, and Maggie, by having a consensus mechanism means that any changes that must be made to this hypothetical Google Doc, aka the blockchain, requires the consensus or the agreement of the other participants, aka me and Maggie. So unless all of us collude to change the data in this Google Doc, there's no way the data can be changed, right? So, so what I'm saying here is, there are essentially three lines of defense to prevent data from ever being modified on a blockchain. First is the cryptology, which is the code writing that goes into building blockchain blocks, which I had explained in my previous video. And then secondly, you know, even if, okay, a Charles manages to find a way to change the data, um, Maggie and I and, you know, everyone else will be able to tell because we had this original ledger or master copy of the original transactions that were done. Lastly, he needed the consensus of me and Maggie, or depending on the blockchain structure, whatever majority consensus percentage that is, to make that change to even begin with. These three lines of defense, by the way, are reasons why data and records that are stored on a blockchain are considered to be totally unchangeable. So I hope this video and my previous video combined are helpful to understand the three major characteristics of a blockchain structure and what makes the data on it so secure. So now that I've laid down the foundations, I hope to actually go into explaining what exactly Bitcoins are in my next video, so stay tuned.